What is up guys, Shira here and welcome to another benchmark episode of Shira's House. But before we get to the results, I felt like I had to give this game a just review to share my insights with players like me who want to explore a different theme of gaming. I also want to let you know that the video will contain some spoilers, so if you want to skip the whole review, I've put a time mark on the description which will direct you to the benchmark portion of the video. For spending another Christmas alone. You just ran out of time. Knowing that tonight we put to rest one of Gotham's most heinous and relentless. Batman Arkham Origins was released late 2013 and was included in one of the top games of its time. It is a very story rich game with the events taking place five years before Batman Arkham Asylum. In this series, Batman is yet to be considered as a vigilante by the authorities and still goes around as a rumor and a mystery even for the villains. Speaking of villains apart from our usual evildoers and aside from the local robbers and thugs, you as Batman will go up against the Black Mask. This bad guy has ridden each corner of the city with crime, and as he finds you want to be a hindrance to his plans, he places a bounty on your head. The bounty catches the fancy of eight notorious assassins and you'll be going against them throughout the game. Assassins, sir. As in more than one. That's right. And you heard this from the mouth of a crocodile man. His name is Killer Croc. He's already behind bars. Oh, I pity his cellmate. I don't. Let's see what else is on the drone's hard drive. Each of them gets one of these envelopes. I need them delivered tonight. They're all hired killers, the best in the business. Black Mask isn't messing around. For several years, I've only played games with themes such as survival, MMO, and open world. So diving into the world of single player games has pretty much been an adventure for me. This game in particular really got me hooked because it felt like I was watching a Batman movie and playing it at the same time. Being in the shoes of the main character and discovering his story will get you engrossed with the game and its storyline. Cutscenes in the game are pretty much a staple as they give you time to understand the story. Plus, it's a great opportunity for you to sit back, relax, or get yourself ready and hype up for the next mission or fight. I find these cutscenes a necessary part of the game's entertainment because playing after long hours without them will probably make it feel like a drag. Saving the game will not be a problem because the game pretty much autosaves every few minutes or so. Venturing around the map, you will come across some crime scenes in certain places. Crime scenes are pretty much an interesting bit of the game. With Batman using one of Wayne Enterprises' latest tech, you will be able to review what happened a few seconds before the crime. The scanner will recreate the scene for you right before your eyes while you press the buttons for rewind or forward. Viewing crime scenes reveal clues but the whole process I think is pretty linear. However for me it is a nice touch added to the game which makes the whole experience all the more interesting because it is one of the first games to have added this feature in. Aside from crime scenes, the game will also give you a bunch of obstacles in which you will be using Batman's equipment to solve them. Like grabbing an item from a distance with your bat claw, pulling yourself across a sewage line, using a remote controlled batarang to turn a switch off, and many more. As you move along with the story, you will be provided with a list of your current missions, and each will be conveniently indicated on the map when you have finished one after the other. However, there will be much more to explore in the map aside from the main storyline, which will lead you with a bunch of several other things you might want to do before moving on to your main mission. Yes, this is the part where the other villains show you what things they have in store for you. So staying on one path can be hard to do unless you are systematic with your gameplay. So if you're not a very systematic player, I'd suggest that you clear one cluster of the map before proceeding to the main mission and continuing again with the side missions after that. The map does feel empty most of the time as you don't see civilians anywhere. All you'll be seeing as you glide through Gotham are thugs and cops. It's not the most interactive background for an open world game because most of us do like a bit of friendly or funny interaction with a few NPCs, but it does keep you focused on your missions. Boss fights will entertain you and get you pumped up as cutscenes will come in and out before you proceed to the battle. However, they can be challenging at times because you won't be fighting them one-on-one. -on -one. 
Like most boss fights, there will be thugs and henchmen on the side serving as distractions. But these henchmen will vary in difficulty depending on what they have or what type of henchmen they are. There will be normal henchmen that you can counter attack easily. Henchmen with sharp melee weapons which you will have to dodge with a certain combination. I'm gonna have fun with you. Tanky henchmen that you will have to stun to attack. And henchmen with guns which you will have to leap away from. This may sometimes feel as though it's too much to go up against, but what is a game without a challenge, right? That sweet feeling of victory after minutes of sweating will be worth it. Now as the game was originally released for console, it would still be best and easier to play the game on PC with a controller instead. Playing it with a mouse and keyboard will give you a challenge. Trying to switch to different equipment is difficult on keyboard and it just doesn't feel right. So using a controller with all the necessary buttons that are just a few centimeters away from each other will give you the best experience and comfort while you play. The verdict, considering that it is a 5 year old game, it still is one to consider going back to if you miss the game or if you're trying it out for the first time if you haven't played a game like me. It is one of those games that made me daydream during work and imagine what would happen next on the storyline. For the past couple of days, honestly, it's the only thing I could think of on the way home. With all things said, I'd give it a 4.5 out of 5. Is the game still worth playing this year and the next with a budget graphics card like the ARX 560 4GB version? Yes it is. If you're wondering why, let's go ahead and move on to our benchmark results. With every option in the settings set to high, I tested the game without recording, while recording, and while streaming. For this benchmark, I used fraps, and all tests were done within a time frame of 15 minutes. In case you want to test a few games on your own, I added the link on the description below. With my current system using an i5-7600 non-K, RX 560 4GB, and 16 gigs of RAM, this is what we got. Without recording, we were able to get a minimum of 23, a max of 88, and an average frame rate of 64. I don't have a video for this, but I can assure you that gameplay was pretty smooth. No lag and no stutters at all. However, while recording, we got a minimum of 13, a max of 88, and an average of 56 FPS. Still barely experienced any lag and gameplay was pretty smooth as well. Streaming it, we got a minimum of 30 a max of 72, and an average of 50.75 or 51. At this point, it was still pretty smooth, and although minimal, your game will start to lag as the video was being archived and uploaded and streamed at the same time, with a streaming bitrate of 6 Mbps. Is it worth it this 2018? Yes, I was surprised that a 5-year-old game was this good and probably even better compared to some newer games out there. Although the cutscenes were pixelated at times as all old games were 5 years ago, the game is still just too good for me to notice all the negatives. If you're thinking of buying the game from Steam and haven't tried it before, go ahead and do it because you will get your money's worth. But of course, buying it on sale is always better, especially those who have played it on console and just want to play the game all over again. I hope this video helped you decide on your GPU or the game and if it did, please do press the like button and subscribe if you still haven't. If it did not, do let me know why on the comments below so you could share your experience with everyone else as well. If you also think that I need to improve on something, do add that too and I would gladly listen to your advice. As I always say, mistakes are your best teachers. Again, Shirotsuki here, thank you, and I will see you on the next video.